Bhagavad-gita, 14th shloka of the third chapter. Annat bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anna sambhava hai. Yajnyat bhavati parjanya hai. Yajnya hai karma samud bhava hai. Shri Krishna has been telling to Arjuna how the whole universe is working on the principle of Yajna and how the cycle of Yajna goes on. So, Prajapati created this universe, created human beings, living beings and said that they will multiply and by worshipping gods and by respecting them, by offering to them something in sacrifice. Also, gods start cherishing human beings or living beings. And like that, if one enjoys sense objects or one enjoys the fruits of one's actions, after sharing it with other beings, and performing the five kinds of yajna or sacrifice which was told, then there is a sustainable living. There is a model of life which will ensure that the successive generations also get enough resources of the universe. So here in the Bhagavad Gita we find a ecological model sustainable ecological model of life and continuing that thought Sri Krishna says Bhutani living beings Annat from food Bhavanti come into existence Parjanyat from rain Anna Sambhavaha production of food Parjanyaha rain Yajnyat from Yajna Bhavati arises and Yajna Karma Samudbhava is born out of karma. So the significance of karma yoga is brought here. Significance of doing action is brought here. Sri Krishna says that from food living beings are born. Sri Ramakrishna says that in this world the life is dependent on food. Annagata, annagata pran. So, life is dependent on food. If you don't get food, then you cannot live. Or people can't live much without food. Even if somebody fasts for one day, that person becomes weak. Whereas in our Puranas or in the accounts of the past, millennia we find that people used to live without food for many many days they used to practice austerity but not so in this age where we are so much dependent on food why because we don't have energy or we have lost the ability to store energy and even otherwise food is necessary for living beings to come into existence and this food is produced from earth and for earth to produce food of all the other things the most important thing required is water and that water comes from rain so that is why wherever there is no rain there is drought and there it directly hits cultivation agriculture so from food come living beings and for this food to be produced you need rain and for rain to come you need this cycle of sacrifice, yajna. That means a person, why would rain come? 
so this can be interpreted into in two ways one is that a person does sacrificial rites as prescribed in the vedas and it causes some merit and because of that gods are pleased and they give rain the other interpretation could be that if a person as told in the previous shloka if a person eats or consumes only that which is remainder from a yajna then that person is freed from all sins but a person who enjoys only for the sake of oneself or eats only for the sake of oneself eats sin means incurs sin that means before you consume of anything before you partake of anything one has to ensure that that particular thing is there for the successive generations so if one is using water one has to ensure that water is conserved so that a person's usage of water does not endanger the resources of water a person's usage of food does not endanger the usage of food for other people so there is so much of wastage of water food etc that is against the principle of sacrifice so if one does not do this if one does not ensure that the water or food is conserved what will happen then there will be no rain that means there will be no further resources for the successive generation or even for oneself so in one uh, season a person is using water next year that person may not get so much water etc so that is also another meaning of yajna for example we talk of conservation of forest so if someone has used a tree that person has to ensure that there are as many trees have been used so many trees will be there for the future generation or in the future also if one just cuts trees then there will be no rain similarly if one just goes on occupying the lands of forest there will be no rain if someone is going on constructing buildings then also there will be no rain so that means wherever you don't ensure that there is a sustainable development means there is something which you are leaving as a uh, you are not just wiping everything off from the face of earth but you are leaving something for other people unless you do that there will be no rain so and also this is born out of karma that means this is born out of action or this is born out of performing those sacrificial rites which are told in the vedas then he says karma brahmodbhavam vidhi brahma akshara samudbhavam tasmat sarvagatam brahma nityam yagne pratishtitam karma here the karma means the karma which has been practiced or sacrificial rites which have been practiced as told in the vedas so no karma to have risen from the veda brahma udbhavam brahma here means vedas so karma has risen from the vedas in the sense one does sacrificial rites because they are prescribed in the vedas so karma brahmod bhavam vidhi no then brahma akshara samudbhavam and vedas are not books what are they they are mass of knowledge which have been realized by rishis and they have told that told about that so when when we say veda it does not mean some particular book but it means a mass of knowledge 
and that knowledge comes because of the ultimate reality that is akshara means aksharam means imperishable ultimate reality so these rishis they have realized that ultimate reality and their realization is expressed in the form of vedas so veda akshara samudbhavam brahma akshara samudbhavam so this veda which is called brahma here is the result or it has come from the imperishable tasmat therefore sarvagatam all pervading brahma nityam yagne pratishtitam therefore one has to know that the all pervading veda why veda is all pervading because veda is nothing but the knowledge of the ultimate brahman and ultimate reality which is all pervading so all pervading veda all pervading veda is situated or centered in yajna that means yajna this universe all pervading veda means what all pervading reality that means this universe all pervading reality as we see it through ignorance this universe this universe has its center in yajna that means this universe has its center in the cyclical transmission of things you take knowledge you give knowledge you take food you give exertion you take love you give back love you take emotional support spiritual support you give back emotional support or spiritual knowledge so this is the cyclical transmission on which this whole universe is based so that has to be maintained as long as one is in ignorance so that is what is told here so there are four purusharthas of human life dharma artha kama moksha righteous living proper living and from that proper living or righteous living one earns one's wealth and by earning that wealth one uses that wealth for the fulfillment of desires and that person also then gradually evolves and starts to seek the ultimate end of life that is moksha cessation of repeated birth and death so that is called moksha so dharma artha kama moksha these are the four purusharthas four goals of life and so these four goals of life have to be attained through yajna through the cyclical transmission of things through the cyclical process of sacrifice so it has to be attained through sacrifice that is why in the indian wisdom or in the eastern wisdom the question is not how much more you can have but the question is with how much how less you can survive that is the question not i want to have this i want to have that etc but with how less can i survive how much less do i need so that is the question why because there is this word called aparigraha what does it mean it means not coveting other people's wealth means not having other people's things i am not going to hold on to things which belong to others that means what if you need one watch and if you have two watches that means you have already occupied or you have already grabbed on to something which belongs to the other other person because your need is not two watches your need is only one watch but you have two watches that means you have already grabbed something which belongs to other so i it is uh, the indian wisdom does not say that you should not use things you should use things but you should use them only as long as it is necessary a minimalistic way of life not because it is easy to manage etc but because that is a less of encumbrance less of bondage and less of hindrance of your spiritual life that is why you should have less and less of things as much it is necessary that's all so that kind of yajna that is actually sacrifice so sacrifice in that sense yajna 
that sense that I will not keep more than what I need. And if you do that automatically, that is the first step to ensure that other people get. So even money, if you keep more than what you need, then you are stealing, stealing from other people. So you might have money, you might have earned that, legitimately it might be your wealth, but if you have money more than what you actually need, then you should spend it on other people. If you are not doing it, then you are not doing yajna. Not only you are not doing yajna, you are stealing other people's wealth. So that is the idea here. So this yajna is something on which the entire universe is centered upon. The entire universe is based upon this idea of yajna, this performance of yajna. So if one does not perform yajna, then that person is going against the scheme of nature. So we have been told that this is a great cosmic cycle of the universe where the sacrifice is going on. And so Shri Krishna now says in the 16th shloka, evam pravartitam chakram na anuvartayati hayaha adhayuhu indriyaramo moham parthasa jivati yaha hu iha here evam thus pravartitam that which has been set revolving chakram wheel na not anuvartayati follows partha o son of pritha aghayuhu living in sin indriya aramaha satisfied in the senses saha that person mogaha in vain jivati so a person who does not hear that means in this world a person who does not follow this chakra of yajna a person who does not follow this chakra of action because earlier also it has been told that this yajna is nothing but karma if you do karma then you will uh, yajna can be done through karma yajna karma samudbhava hai. so from karma yajna will be done that means from action yajna will be done because this action the scheme of things have been started by prajapati or brahma on the basis of what on the basis of what is written in the or what was revealed through the vedas to the rishis so this yajna has to be followed a person who does not evam pravartitam chakram that chakra or wheel of action or yajna that has been pravartita has been started by prajapati by brahma a person who does not na anuvartayati one who does not follow that, that person, what does that person do? That person lives in sin. Aghayuhu. And Indriya Rama, that person is satisfied in one's senses. Most people are satisfied in senses. And Mogham Jivati, that person lives in vain, useless life. So most people, all of your lives are useless. Why? Because you are living for yourself. You are not bothered about the other person or the other living being. All the time thinking about me, mine, me, mine, me, mine. That is the life. So that is a useless life. If that person lives or dies, this universe has nothing to gain or lose. So that is the thing. That Mogham Sajivati. That person lives in vain, of no use. So even if a person does little help when that person dies or that person passes away many people are uh, really they feel sorrow they feel sad that oh that person was there and that person used to help us anything anybody was in difficulty that person used to help but here if a person lives selfishly when that person dies nobody even cares about that person nobody is bothered also Maybe only the relatives will come also. Why? Because that person might have some wealth and they would want to know who to whom this wealth has been given. And only for that purpose they will come. Otherwise they are also not interested. Why? Once that person dies, nobody wants to come to the uh, cremation etc. Why? Because you have been no good to this world. 
no benefit has occurred to this world. Yehatu Atma Ratireva Syad Atma Triptascha Manavaha Atma Nyeva Sacha Santushtaha Tasya Karyam Navidyate. So here, till now, what was being told was about a person who is in ignorance, who does not know one's true nature, who is still caught up in the web of desires. About that person, it was being told. But now, it is being told about a person who is self-realized soul, a person who has realized the nature of one's true self. <coughs> Two, but, yaha manavaha, that person, atma ratihi, one who is immersed ratihi, immersed, devoted in atma, self, oneself, eva, alone, only in oneself, cha, and atma tripta, and satisfied with the self, with atman, one's true rea uh, nature, reality, cha and atmani and in in the self eva alone santushtaha one is content syat may be tasya that person's karyam whatever work has to be done na vidyate so a person who is always immersed in the reality or in one's true reality that is atman or brahman and one is content with one's true reality and is satisfied with one's reality, does not need anything else, does not desire anything else, does not crave for anything else, that person has no obligatory duty. So Sri Ramakrishna in his own wonderful style tells this, that when there is a bride, daughter-in-law, and she is pregnant. So in the beginning, she does some work she in the household. Then gradually, mother-in-law says, no, Sri Ramakrishna told this in that time. Now maybe most cases, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law are not staying together. But wherever it is, so mother-in-law says that now you don't need to do so much of work. Now you gradually withdraw. So like that so when the uh, when the uh, pregnancy has become mature then there is no work to be done by the daughter in law so she is completely in rest so that is what when when the pregnant uh, the delivery date is uh, coming nearer and nearer so she is not doing anything so similarly a person so this example shri ramakrishna gives to uh, to tell that a person who is content in oneself, one who has realized God, that person's duties are removed. There is no duty. And that is what is told in the Bhagavad Gita here. That a person who is content in oneself has no obligatory duty. The duties are removed. One by one all the bondages of work created by the idea that one is the doer and one is the enjoyer, they shed away. So th that goes away. One does not need to do any work. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat